Welcome back. In the previous videos, we looked at the individual component in TEM. Now, we are ready to put everything together. This is where we left off. Any TEM composes of the condenser lens system, objective lens system, and the projector lens system. We can look at TEM in a different light. If we view TEM as an optical microscope, it can be divided into the illumination system, objective system, and imaging system. In this video, we'll only focus on the illumination system. The illumination system consists of the electron source, condenser lenses, condenser stigmata, condenser aperture, as well as the very top of the specimen. We'll look at how the beam characteristics will be affected by changing the parameters in those components. We have already discussed the electron sources and the condenser stigmata in the previous videos. Here, we'll focus on the C1 lens, C2 lens, and the, the size of the condenser aperture. The C1 lens controls the spot size, and the C2 lens controls the intensity. Before going into the details, we first need to remember that the electron beam in TEM doesn't go straight down, it spirals down. However, to better illustrate the beam optics in TEM, we adopt the straight lines for the ray diagram. Looking at the C2 lens first, if we strengthen the C2 lens, it will bend the beam more and it will converge to a larger convergence semi-angle. If we set the C2 lens pretty weak, the beam is diverged, and it is usually phrased as the parallel beam. There is a note here that the parallel beam is not absolutely parallel, it is just less converged. By converging the beam, we have a larger alpha, the convergence semi-angle. We use relatively parallel beam to do TEM imaging, and we use convergent beam to do STEM. We can also use the size of the condenser aperture to tune the convergence semi-angle. If we use a smaller C2 aperture, then we will have a smaller convergence angle. If you recall what we learned back in the electron sources video, the value of alpha can directly affect the beam diameter or the probe size, which determines the stem resolution. Larger alpha leads to larger numerical aperture and improved resolution based on the diffraction limit. On the other hand, the larger value of alpha can also lead to more severe spherical aberration. In practical situation, we usually like a larger alpha, usually that leads to a refined probe size, thus better resolution in STEM. Moving to the C1 lens, as we mentioned before, C1 lens controls the spot size. By strengthening the C1 lens, you have a lot more beam getting blocked by the aperture, but you end up getting a smaller probe. So the end result is that you can improve the stem resolution, but you decrease the signal to noise ratio. The next thing I like to talk about is the C3 lens. You see this more and more in modern TEMs. If you plan to do stem imaging, one thing you can do is to strengthen the C2 lens to converge the beam as much as possible. Alternatively, you can turn off the C2 lens and the C3 lens will help converge the beam. This approach gives you a further improved probe size and a better resolution in STEM. The C3 lens does not have to be made from only one lens, it can be made from two lenses, and this is called the twin lens system. Both Technai TEMs in MIC at Texas A&M University are twin lens systems. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is the gun shift and the gun tilt. If the alignment is not right, the beam can be bent a few times, and the physical location of the source is different from where it appears to be. Such artifacts can also lead to the illusion that the beam comes in at an angle instead of coming straight down. In order to correct them, we need to do gun shift and gun tilt. The fundamental idea of the gun shift and gun tilt alignment is to make sure the electron beam travels along the optical axis of the lenses. How do we do gun tilt and a gun shift? Let's come back to the TEM sketch. So we have the gun deflectors to do that. 
Similarly, in the objective system, we have the beam deflectors to do beam shift and beam tilt. In the imaging system, we have the image deflectors to do the image shift and image tilt. What you have now in the sketch is a complete version of a regular TEM with all the critical components. The aim is that you can draw that independently and you know the function of each component. This is the first step to differentiate a good microscopist and someone who uses TEM as a magnifying glass. In the next video, we'll wrap up the instrumentation part of TEM. We will also briefly discuss the imaging forming principles as well as the diffraction formation.